Hi, everyone, and welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, Senior Trainer and Support here at Digital Drafting Systems. The following is an excerpt from our webinar on what is new in AutoCAD 2024. Please do not hesitate to drop us a line should you have any questions. Enjoy our presentation. Have a great day. And now we have Markup Imports and Markup Assist. In this one, there's a lot of things that we're actually going to be looking at. So let's go ahead and start uh, right away. It, basically, uh, we know that all of these changes are making our markups uh, uh, a cinch. And we know that uh, replacing items or modifying items from the markup to the DWG is now a breeze to do. So why don't we go ahead and take a look and see how that's been changing. Very well, let's go ahead and close this out and save changes note to this. And let's go ahead and open. Back one, block replacement. Oh, we've done that one, sorry. Uh, markup assist is where we need to do. Oops. Sorry about that. It looks like uh, I, let me just cut this out of here and place it back where it's supposed to be. I apologize for this. It's my mistake because I'm clicking too fast and I apologize for that. Okay, let's go ahead and import markup assist. Let's go ahead and open that up. And let's close this dialog box for insert because we actually need to say, see what's going on here. Uh, one thing and the first thing that we're actually gonna see is that uh, we are tempted to bring in the PDF that holds all our red lines. Okay, and this is the PDF import. And, and this is the wrong way to do it, but I just want you to make sure, I want to make sure rather, that you understand why this is the wrong step. If I select the import, I'm actually going to the markup assist, and yes, we're, this is the one we're looking at, but by, by selecting it, we see that there is a, a red line on there, okay? This is the image taken of the actual bitmap. So let's go ahead and say, open that up. Okay, there it is, we'll leave it all as it is, we'll say okay, and Look what happened. Notice that the red lines were this were taken out. And what happens is it converted the whole PDF into an actual drawing. These are actually polylines, okay, as you can see. All right, so this is what it's doing is it's bringing in a PDF and turning it into a drawing. This is not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is slightly different. If we go to the... um. Give me a second. Um, it's going to be into the collaborate. Okay. And then we go into the collaborates and we look at traces. We have two icons here, the markup import, which we're not going to use. I'm just going to go ahead and click it so you can see it allows you to go ahead and to look for what it is that you want to import. But I'm not going to use this one because it actually repeats itself here in the traces. And there it is. Now, here in the traces, what I want you to see is that it automatically reads where these particular tracings have been and what they do. In this particular one, for example, is called furniture. And there it is. You see that? Let's go ahead and delete it by right click, delete. Super interesting. Can we create a new one? Yes, absolutely. Well, we create a new one by coming in here. We can select it. And then obviously we can rename it if we so wish. Okay, and once again, we can also delete it. But let's go ahead and, and do it a little bit more in the way that the workflows usually are. Why don't we go ahead and bring in the actual tracing markup? Obviously, it's the same dialog box as it gives us here, which is the import markup PDF. That's the one we want. It's going to read it, evaluate it, okay? And in reading it and in evaluating it, okay, it's going to, uh, let's go ahead and uh, accept placement here. And it's going to actually give us the PDF in this form. It's not really showing us what the, the lines are in the PDF, it's showing me what the red lines are. This is, this is, and, and you'll notice also, this is actually something that I did in the PDF and I really tried to make it as messy as I could in here to see if I could actually kind of uh, fool the system. Now, one thing that you need to do before you start this is you need to turn on the markup assist and you do that by selecting this icon here. This will give you two additional icons. 
which is the transparency or, fa or fading of the markup, which is basically fading this. Okay, you see that? Those are the markups. That's what that does. But what we're more interested in is this one. So let's go ahead and select here, and let's go ahead and select the blue line. Notice that it doesn't do anything to the actual reds. It actually does it to the blue um, frame around what is going to be seen as the markup that needs to be uh, studied or looked at. So if I select this, it automatically, oops, sorry, wrong one, wrong one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I turned it off. I shouldn't have turned it off. Sorry. Uh, by selecting it like this, it gives us the markup assist options. And in this particular one, it's recognizing that if there's text inside this box, and what do you want to do with it? Do you want to insert it as an M leader? Do you want to insert it as an M text? Or do you want to append it to an existing uh, text that is there? We're actually going to see all three of them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the insert as a, an, a multi leader. It's going to tell us, well, where is it that you actually are pointing at? I'm pointing here, and then I'm placing my leader here with its note there. If I actually get in close, you'll see it says need furniture, which is basically what it says there. It understood my little uh, messed up looking uh, letters that I've put here, okay? And where is this grabbing its information from? Well, it's grabbing it from the, from the particular markup that is encircled there. But more importantly, I think, is how is it knowing what it is that, uh, what kind of M leader you're going to be placing on and what the properties of the M leader that it's going to be using is? Well, really, what this is doing is selecting, and I'm just going to go back real quick here into the um, annotate. It's selecting whatever this is by default, and it's using that, okay? So whatever you defaulted is, is in here, and however that is defined, that's what it's going to use for this, okay? Very well, um, let's come back here. All right, so that's what that that's one way of doing it. Let's go ahead and undo so we can see the other ones. Very well, we select this one and let's go ahead and say insert as M text. And it's just gonna tell me to insert it here and basically the same thing pretty much that we saw earlier. Let's go ahead and undo. Again, because I'm going to now, or rather, we are going to now explore how this gets added to that. So once again, we come over here, we hover, it gives us, tells us that this is a markup selected. Let's go ahead to update existing text. It's asking us what text do you want to update? It's going to be this one. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? You want to append it? You want to select as a strikeout or you want to undo. Let's go ahead and append it. There it is. It gives us my dialog box, which I can then use to finalize the way it's supposed to be reading. Click it and it's been appended now. So that's how the markup assist works when it comes to text. Let's see how it comes to or what it does when it comes to the particular um, frame here of an area that I've defined in this red um, on um, um, that no, uh, uh, red kind of T that I created here to isolate the section that I wanted to be pointed out. Okay, by coming over here and once again these items need to be on. Once again, I come come over here and look. We have the little uh, bolt of lightning. We select it and it recognizes that as an Revision Cloud. So I go ahead and select Revision Cloud and it automatically switches it to a Revision Cloud. Where is the layer coming from? Once again, it's coming from your default current layer. Okay, where is the settings coming from? The settings are coming from these settings right in here. That's where it's grabbing all of that information and creating that cloud. The, it does not have, though, the ability to give you a contoured shape the way the cloud does, but it does isolate it and marks and flags it for you. Okay? So, once again, things to remember here. Remember, this is defining the way the text that you're placing looks like by the current M text or the current um, a multi-leader line or the current layers that you have 
or set in your drawing. That's where it's der deriving its properties from. It's something that we need to be clear about. And last but not least, when now that we're looking at the um, uh, markups, let's go ahead and see what improvements they've made to the options of the markups. And this is what they have there. Okay, this is mar working on the trace itself, okay? Let me go back here. Okay, this is working on the trace itself. You can actually increase it or decrease it. Okay, this is the trace itself. And in this one, it's the markup. Okay. Once again, interestingly enough, sort of like we have in some of the other dialog boxes that have to do with comparisons and stuff like that, we have the ability to turn things on and off, which is really a cool little um, uh, option there that we've got. Okay. So now we've seen what the improvements in the markup and markup assist or markup import and markup assist have been. 